Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. After one month my hiatus, Delta go from you, systems coming online. Delta, got what now? A code transmission on screen. Oh come now, it's just a picture. Running stenography protocol. Stenography definition one, a sneaky way of hiding a text message into the binary coding of an image or music file, but making very subtle changes into the binary coding, for example changing a 1 to a 0 or a 0 to a 1, which is therefore undetectable by the human eye. And the only way to decode that is using an online stenography tool, or comparing the altered bits, then then writing all the altered bits in as binary, and then converting the that binary into text, which therefore takes a lot of time to decode. A review request coming in from November Echo Alpha Tango. November Echo, I'm done. Sonic, hold on, let me teach you how to f- <sighs> Yeah, yeah, that does it. Hey everyone, it's Bar Commander 1980, Chief Editor of Disabled Gaming Reviews here. First off, a big happy birthday to my friend Andrew Open Rock Carpenter. Hope you have a good day. Now, for something a bit more heartfelt. So, before this review begins, I would like to say from the bottom of my heart, we appreciate your patience. Thank you for giving me enough emotional space and time for my epilepsy situation to be sorted out. And another big shout out to some of our friends in the digital. For the request to do this game in the first place and the badass 1440p gaming monitor in which reviews from now on will be running on, giving me a mood booster when it was sorely needed, i.e. waiting for a prescription to come through and the all important CT scan results to be processed. With all of this aside, let's get on with this review. What is everyone, this week I review one of 2022's most anticipated releases. Can Declan hide the computer and steal the missile launch codes, or will he find himself in the gulag before this review even starts? Without further ado, let's find out. You know what guys, I've been waiting about a month to say this. The Call of Duty series is one of the biggest titans of the FPS subgenre. Its control of the gaming industry as a whole cannot be understated. As a case in point, two of the biggest console giants of the industry, excluding Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft have been battling it out over an acquisition between the game's publishers Activision and Microsoft throughout the course of 2022, and date of scripting and recording, that battle is still continuing. The first game of the franchise was a World War II shooter, running on the heels of EA's game's highly successful Medal of Honor series, released for the PC, Xbox and PS2. On October 29th, 2003, developed by Infinity Ward. The next two games of the series continuing the era of World War II, released for the PC and Xbox 360 in 2005 and 2006 respectively, developed by Infinity Ward again and Treyarch. In 2007, the Call of Duty franchises we know and love today truly kicked off when the fourth game in the series, dubbed Modern Warfare, developed by Infinity Ward, released for the PC, PS3, Xbox 360, even the Nintendo Wii. This title was later remastered by Raven Software, released for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in 2016. Although the only ways to get your grubby hands on that title was to purchase the $80 edition to the highly criticized Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, which is in my honest opinion, one of the most controversial games of the Call of Duty franchise. And fast forward to 2022 with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the soft reboot of the 2006 entry under the same name. You play as Gaz, one of the members of the multinational elite special operations force known as Task Force 141, as they track down an Iranian terrorist group who's stolen American-made ballistic missiles. But the accessibility scores are as follows. To get the ball rolling, visibility has got a sky high 11. The color scheme can be completely customized via the interface section in the options menu. On top of that, the font size in both subtitles and the interface can be fully customized again in the head to feet section in the options menu. This allows a player to, for the visual impairment to read the text which appears in both in subtitles and menus without the risk of you getting any eye strain while reading them. 
Once again, the developers failed to disappoint in terms of this category. Next up, on ability, give it 10. As I have said before, there are subtitles which can be enabled and disabled via the interface section of the options menu. What makes this game better is that both in-game chatter in multiplayer matches and dialogue during the campaign is subtitled, so a player with a hearing impairment should be able to play this game with pretty much no issues. Next up, Mobility has got a sky high 11. Once again, the developers feel to disappoint in terms of this category. When using the trusty keyboard and mouse, the controls can be fully customized to suit your impairment. There is also controller support for this game, and this is no exemption. There are numerous stick layouts and a plethora of button layouts to choose from. Can't seem to find which button layout that is suitable for your impairment? No problem. You can create your own button layout so you can tailor which button layout is suitable for your impairment. So a player with a mobility impairment should be able to play this game with no issues, regardless of which version you had to be playing on. Certainly, last but no means least, gameplay give it 10. Gameplay wise, this game has a lot of polish and replayability. Although the campaign is fairly average, the main campaign can be completed in 8 hours. This game has a lot more focus on the multiplayer, which is to no surprise as the majority of Call of Duty's appeal is its multiplayer. Similar to its predecessor, the game's Battle Royale mode Warzone returns, with a whole new mode to make this game fresh, DMZ mode. This mode allows you to explore the map which is used in Battle Royale matches, with AI enemies to keep you on your toes and other players to add a competitive element, with missions to unlock various weapons and operators which can be used in multiplayer and Battle Royale matches. With this game getting bigger and bigger with each and every season, with adding new maps, modes and operators, there's always is fresh content to keep you playing. In summary, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is an excellent addition to the franchise. It takes what's good about its predecessor and cranks them tenfold. The experience is better when you're playing on the next generation system, for example, the Xbox Series S or X or PS5, as the game is more feels more responsive due to the higher frame rate, while well, hardware ray tracing makes the game look a lot better. And so if you're an FPS enthusiast and looking for a multiplayer first person shooter on the next generation systems, I seriously cannot recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is a gargantuan 105%. And the return to review as normal kicks you off in the right way with a massive score. See you guys in the next review, Spartan Commander 1998. Roll out Spartan Century. Mm -hmm.